Okay, uh, we are continuing with chapter 11 of Things Fall Apart. Remember, we are still in part one of the novel. And this chapter basically just uh, looks at three most important things. First of all, it looks at the art of storytelling. So we see at the beginning, um, Enzimna and Ikwefi are both telling stories. And then also towards the end of the chapter, where Okongo and um, Ikwefi are telling stories. Right. And once again, we continue to follow the story of uh, Enzimna. And in this chapter, it explains how she's taken one night by the priestess of Akbala to the oracle's cave. So in essence, we're looking at the relationship between the spirit world and the world of the language. Right. So which major event takes place in this novel? So the major, the major event that takes place in this novel is when the priestess of Akbala, also known as Chielo, took um, Enzimna. Right. So basically, the chapter opens up with Okongo relaxing in his heart after the evening meal. He listens to the voices of his wives and children uh, telling folk stories. So it's in the evening, everybody has had dinner and... Um, you know, it's culture that after dinner they would either sit around the fire or actually the wife, uh, uh, the mother would sit um, in a heart with their children telling stories. Right. Note that it was a moonless night. Okay. Ikwefu and Enzimna sit in their heart telling stories. Ikwefu tells the story of a clever tortoise who tricks the bird into helping him get a feast in the sky. Right, so basically he tricks them by convincing them to take on different names while he takes on the name all of you. Right, so when he asks the people of the sky for whom they have prepared the feast, they say they've prepared it for all of you. And as a result, the tortoise eats his fill for any of the birds. Note that the tortoise in the previous slide is coming across as a greedy cunning um, tortoise in his wily maneuvering and sweet talking in order to get a feast in the heaven. Right, now we're going to look at the art of storytelling. Now the oral tradition is an important part of the Igbo culture as it means uh, as it is a means for teaching children history and customs. Right, so Ikwefi and Enzimna share the tradition of storytelling in their heart at night. Ikwefi's story emphasizes the importance of names since the tortoise manages to trick everyone by changing their names. Once again, touches on the theme of the importance of language. Right, the story also explains the world around them, the story of the tortoise, so why the tortoise shell looks the way that it does. Right, the story of uh, the telling of stories between mother and child is universal and it's no different from what goes on in any other white household across the world. What was basically the major moral of the story of the tortoise is basically uh, don't be greedy. Right, as we continue the uh, 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 unpacking chapter 11, so Enzimna complains that because she loves songs, that there is no song in the story that she uh, was told by her mother, Igwefi, and then she begins to tell her own story. Suddenly, a high-pitched voice breaks off her storytelling, and then Chielo arrives. She says that the god, uh, Akbala, wants to see Enzimna in his house, in the hills and the cave. Now, remember that Chielo is a friend of Ikwefi, right? In other words, in, a, in her normal life, she is Chielo. She's a friend of uh, uh, Ikwefi. She's kind and supportive and she loves Enzimna as her own child. Right. And then there's the other side of her, obviously. This is the side that obviously then represents the spiritual world. Uh, so as the priestess of Akbala, please note that she's very terrifying and threatening. Right. So she says that she, Ikwefi then says that she will go to Pachiolo, curses her and commands her not to, to go. Right, and please note there that Ikwefu 
even after being defied by Cielo, uh, she still continues. She defies Cielo's order and follows her because she has a mind to protect her daughter. Right, so Cielo tells Enzimna, who is very afraid because she was woken up from her sleep, uh, she tells her to climb on her back and then together they depart. Where she makes up her mind to follow, and Ogongo in this case does not stop her at all. Right, so Chielo are, uh, carries Enzimna away later. Igwefi tells Ogongo that she's going to follow Chielo regardless of the punishment. She follows her all night through all the nine villages. Chielo takes Enzimna into the Oracle's cave and Igwefi then waits outside. Right, now please note that Igwefi continues to follow Chielo despite her doubts and fears. This, what does this then reveal about her character? It reveals that she's strong, she, uh, uh, her strong will. Uh, she comes to the conclusion that she's willing to protect her daughter no matter the consequences. So she, 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 she does not mind facing the consequences later. Again, note the contrast to Okonko and Igwefi. Though it appears that Okonko has come to this time to, 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 to support her. Right, so once again, yes, they cannot go against the fact that, or they cannot deny Chiolo taking Enzimna because um, she was sent by the Oracle. Right, but at the same time, she still follows. Once again, Okonko also does not stop Igwefi from following Chiolo, which then shows the contrast. Right. So Ogongo appears and then she sits with Igwefi. That's when they obviously tell stories and Igwefi appreciates the fact that he's there. And that is when she reminisces about her youth and her love for Ogongo. Right. Now, how were the two characters developed in this, ca in this chapter? So both Ogongo and Igwefi uh, reveal their devotion to Enzimna by following her to the cave. Right. And in this chapter, we actually see a different side of Okonko because he emerges as a humbling father and a husband in this chapter. Right. Now, as we all know that displaying emotions publicly does not fit with Okonko's perception of manhood. However, in this chapter, Okonko's grave concern for Enzimna is an indication that he cares a great deal about 